Chad here with Winning Tennis. Today I want to make a brief video showing you where topspin comes from. Now, if you learned to play in the distant past, you may have been told it's swing low, finish high. But that's not the entire story. Yes, typically we're going to swing low and finish high, but where topspin comes from in the modern game may be a little deceiving, and I want to demystify that for you. So I'm going to look at a few videos of some of the best pros out there and see where are they really getting topspin from. So let's demystify this and jump right into it. Alrighty then, let's get set to demystify topspin. We've got Roger Federer up to the plate first. Let's see exactly what happens now. Look at that late wrist action right there. We've made videos on that. Now his racket, as you can see, the strings are pointed slightly down, maybe about a 10 degree angle. And that alone is going to end up causing topspin. So when he makes contact with the racket, the, the top of the racket here is actually ahead of the bottom racket, bottom part. So that angle is going to create the topspin, but look what he's doing. He's actually brushing on the top part of the ball and he's rolling the racket right away. Let's just take a look at that again. So as he makes contact, the racket starts to roll right away. And I've seen a lot of pros hit slow motion forehands and I would say that Federer definitely is one of the best in terms of rolling the racket right away and I think that's why he gets such a, a massive amount of topspin on his forehand and he's able to pretty much dominate with it let's finish it off and you can see here that the racket is now when it comes around the strings the part that he hit the ball with they're facing down Okay, and he brings it right on through. Look at that, he catches, he actually catches the racket with his left hand. And I mean, that racket, the butt of the racket is facing almost to the left. That's the way that I like to follow through. And that's the way he's achieving massive topspin on his forehand. Okay, here is the great Rafael Nadal. Let's see what he does for his forehand. I just love these HD, crystal clear, forehand, slow motion, and you can see this is one of the things they all do to achieve a little more topspin, is they have that laid back wrist, which they're not really generating, but when they bring the racket forward, there's a snap back, and that's going to add extra racket speed to the ball, and that's going to add extra topspin as well. Wow, was that just a text message? Now, when he hits the ball here, he makes contact. Most of the time, they're gonna be making contact on the top part of the ball. And then look at that. Look how quick, look how much top spin is generated there. Now, that ball is really going. I mean, you can see the movement on it. That is top spin. Let's take a look at that one more time from here, okay. Yeah, maybe not from there, from here, or here. Okay, let's see what happens. He brings the racket through, and then right at the point of contact. Let me, this is blown up, this is, this is about as slow as it can go. Right at the point of contact now, the wrist is starting to roll, and look at that. His racket strings are facing right to the ground. That's just like Federer. And of course, the great follow through. Except Rafa doesn't catch the racket like Federer. Look at that, he wraps it around his body too. That's how you know a good follow through. Okay, I really like this one. This is Jack Sock at Delray Beach. And I've gone to Delray Beach to see, him, to see the events there. Never saw Jack Sock play though, but I've seen the finals three or four times. I know Jack Sock has massive topspin. Here's one thing to notice too. Well, first off, he has a Western grip. That's with the palm up. And the racket head is dropped below the ball. That is something that will definitely help you get topspin. Even if nothing else, just get the head below the hand. Now, when Sock makes contact, 
Okay, he makes it right in the middle of the ball, but right there, notice he starts rolling the, the racket right away. So he makes contact, and now that racket starts to face down the strings. He has more of a windshield wiper than Federer and Nadal. He likes to really use that windshield wiper. And you can see, though, right here, that Federer and Nadal's strings were pointing to the ground, but Sox strings are facing more towards the opponent and that's reminiscent of the windshield wiper so it's good we got to see this one because that could still give you a lot of topspin but I would say for a pure shot the way Federer and Nadal hit the ball is a little cleaner it's a little more difficult to do this with the windshield wiper look at that look at the way his racket is face still facing his opponent it's very interesting. I made videos on it, but the, the longer the strings are facing the opponent, sometimes the more control you can have over the ball. Okay, here's one of my favorite players to watch. This guy just belts the ball left and right, and pound for pound, he has been extremely solid throughout his career. David Ferrer of Spain. Let's take a look. Now, D David does kind of look what I do. I don't, most of the players are going to hold that racket with their non-dominant hand on the take back. I typically don't. And David doesn't. You don't have to. <clears throat> but what he does is he does get his strings pointed to the ground. Look at the bend in his knees. Take a video of yourself and compare that to this. All right. A lot of times people are not getting the top spin they want because they're not bending their legs enough because you drive off the ground. Okay. So he comes through with that late hitting action. And he too has sort of a semi-western or western grip on his forehand. Okay, let's see. That was pretty fast. And he has a bent arm to contact. Okay, let's just see if we can get that slowed down a little bit. Let's put it into the quarter speed. Okay. <clears throat> now, David, he was ranked, I believe as high as number four at one point. Okay, let's see. Yep, look at that. Look at that. He does it very quickly. Very quickly. And freeze. Okay. So he's hitting the top part of the ball. Now watch how quickly the racket starts to roll. I mean, his strings are facing down like probably less than a tenth of a second after he hits the ball. There you go. He has a very interesting follow through too. Very nice. Let's see if there's one more out here. Okay, here's another one. Okay, strings facing down. Guys out there, I mean, if you really want to improve your forehand, try to get your strings facing down on the take back. That allows for the late hitting action. That's the racket snap. And you can see that the butt cap of the racket is going to come towards the ball as late as possible. That's going to give you more racket speed. Okay, and on this one, he doesn't. He doesn't turn the racket down. So this goes to show you that there's not like a one time that you, you know, there's not a one-size-fits-all forehand where you do this every time. Well, that was interesting. I hope you guys really learned something about topspin. It comes from the racket head being slightly under the hand when you bring the racket through. It comes from the roll of the racket at the time of impact. And it comes from the legs, too. You drive up from the legs. You combine all those things together, and you will have amazing top spin that will uh, confound your opponents. So guys, if you like the tips in this video, please subscribe to my channel. I've got a whole lot more coming out in 2018. And if you had any suggestions for videos, please leave them in the description below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.